I assume you feel it just the same way I'm feeling it. Time lapses are pretty damn cool, and today we're talking about time lapse remotes. Hello, you, and welcome to my channel. In case you're new here and you don't know who I am, my name is Matthew Vanderbilt. I'm a little bit of 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 a stuff cheap stuff versus medium stuff and more expensive stuff and other things. Now, some cameras have time-lapse remotes built in. They have built-in intervalometers inside of their menu system, which is fine. I still prefer to shoot with an external remote though. So today I have three separate remotes here. I've got a $20-ish one from eBay or Amazon. I've got one that you can find in the majority of camera stores these days. This is the Hanel Capture Timer Kit, which comes in, you know, obviously separate brands for Canon, Fuji, Sony, Nikon, you name it. And then we have a, because I'm a Canon shooter, we have the really expensive uh, Canon TC80N3, which is Canon's official time-lapse or intervalometer remote. Now, funnily or sadly enough, pricing of these things depends totally on where you live. For example, this Canon remote runs me 294 Australian dollars over here in Sydney, whereas online I can find it for 184. So it kind of defeats the point calling this the most expensive one because it is only really expensive here in Sydney or in Australia for some reason. It doesn't really matter. The point of this video is to figure out if a cheap remote will do the trick or if you need the more expensive expensive one. By the way, all the purchase links for these things are down below. They're affiliate links. You can help me, you can help the channel, you can support me and the channel by buying your stuff through those links. They're called affiliate links. I might make a whole video about affiliate marketing soon in case you don't know what I'm talking about. If you do, I appreciate you clicking those links. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of the cheap model first. I bought this remote on eBay for about 20 to 20 something dollars. It comes with a quite a long cable. I'm not really sure why it's that long. This feels like it's over a meter long. It has a bunch of buttons on there. I'll show you on the screen. The quality, it feels cheap because it is cheap. So what are the pros of this very cheap remote? Obviously the biggest benefit is the price point. It is so damn cheap. I don't know why you wouldn't get one. Second positive is the adaptability. If it comes with one of these plugs, it means that you can plug in a 5D plug or another plug. So with one remote, you can trigger both your 1D camera or you can control your 600D or your T5i or your Rebel camera. Obviously, this is Canon specific, but this translates to all the other cameras as well. Just make sure to buy the right remote. It's not that difficult, really. So price point's good, adaptability is good. What else is good? The fact that it runs off AAA batteries. Uh, some of the other remotes don't run on these. They run on those stupid flat batteries that are expensive and hard to find. Everyone has AAA batteries, they're great. So that's that. Those are the pros for the very cheap time-lapse remote. Now the negatives. Uh, the negative, obviously, it's the build quality. It doesn't feel good. It feels bad. It feels cheap. You guessed it. Not only that, it is not consistent. If I try to trigger a one second interval time lapse with this remote, more often than not, it doesn't even trigger on the second. It triggers on like 1.2 seconds or 1. Point something seconds. From two seconds onwards though, it is consistent. But keep in mind that this thing just doesn't work. <laughs> like, I mean, this might be this model, but I've had a couple of these and a lot of them aren't accurate when it comes to the shorter intervals. Also, I'm just looking at it right now. Um, the, the display is flashing. It's just, yeah, the battery should be good, but I think there might be a connectivity issue with the battery. So keep in mind, like this is something you can use. It's not something you should use, but it's something you maybe should have just in case you want to mess around with time lapse a little bit. What else can you do with these remotes? You can set a delay, so shoot a photo or start a video recording after X amount of minutes and seconds. You can set up a bulb timer, meaning usually your camera has a max uh, exposure time of 30 seconds. With a remote like this, you can set in, for example, a four minute or a one hour long exposure. It's totally gonna cook your sensor because of the sensor heat, but you can do it. Then it has the interval function, which is obviously what we're after. That's the intervalometer, which tells the camera to trigger every X amount of seconds or minutes. Then you can set in the number of photos it'll take. And usually, this is a little hot tip for you, the zero or the dash dash means infinite. So there's no limit. This one tops out at 399 images for some reason. No idea why it wouldn't be 999. Why stop at 399? Anyways. And then it has a button that disables or enables the little beep button. 
For the rest, it functions the same as the shutter button on your camera. So you half press that and it fires the autofocusing signal. If you full press it, it fires the trigger signal to actually shoot the photo. You can lock that for a drive mode time lapse, which is what I call it when the camera just keeps shooting as if you are holding down the shutter button. Now, as I am talking about this cheap remote and the bad build quality, I released it, but it's still going. Yeah, so takes a bit of takes a bit of messing around with. So no, it's got a little lock button and a little light switch on it as well. Again, I use this as a backup for my backup. I actually never really use it, but there you have it. A mini review of the cheapest time lapse remote you can find. Uh, the brands you can find online are like newer, blah 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 blah. I don't know all the names, but newer is the last one I saw online. So yeah, the links down below again. Not a huge fan of this, but it's something you have anyway. Up next, the medium price point. This is the Hanel Capture Time timer kit. So this is a wireless or a wired option. The benefit of a wired option is that it's, you know, there's less points of failure. We'll talk about that later, but let me just take this out of the box. Pretty much what it says that you can do with this is long exposure and time-lapse photography. It's a wireless timer remote, has single continuous and bulb modes. It's a fully programmable interval timer and it has two interval timing sequences. So that's cool. It runs on double A batteries. And this is the remote. It feels a little bit cheap, I gotta say, like those buttons, I don't love the way they sound. Um, and this thing is also quite cheap. It's pretty lightweight, not too lightweight. Let's pop in these batteries and see what it's all about. Battery poppage happening right now. That's one. That's two. Click the receiver as well. So, fairly simple. This thing goes on top of your camera, which is a receiver, has an on-off button or a switch, has a little plug to plug one of these bad boys in. Does it? That feels like it's much too small. How does that work? Yeah, it, that just doesn't feel right. I feel like I'd ruin this thing by plugging that in. Are you guys seeing that? Like, this is a really small hole that I'm trying to put that in. All right, let's give it a, let's give it a push. Ah, there we go. All right, nice and snug, just the way I like it. You turn this remote on by uh, switching the on button, and there you have the screen. Look, it's pretty much the same. There's the delay, which is the delayed uh, trigger as the other one, long, which is a bulb timer, interval one, then N for the number of photos you're gonna shoot with that first interval, interval two, and then interval two N for the number of photos you're gonna shoot on the second sequence. Now this is cool, with one remote, and two of these, you can trigger two time-lapse sequences at the same time. So that is nice. The pros of the Hanel Capture Module Timer, this, I don't know what to call it, it keeps changing names. The pros are the price. This thing is relatively cheap. I paid about $99 at uh, the camera store yesterday, so that is good. I also like that it has an on and an off button because the other two remotes, they're just on. They're always, I mean, I like it, I, I respect that. You're always good to go, but for my peace of mind, I like an off switch in case I don't want to use something and it's you know it just makes sense because you're not using any batteries right so positives the price point the off and on switch I like that the functionality of the two intervals I like that as well aside of that it's the same thing as another remote it has the same functions but yeah the fact that you can trigger two time lapses at the same time is quite cool the adaptability or the multitude of connections that you can have with one remote so this works for your 5d or your 1d series and this works for everything uh, that's beneath that again this is the Canon kit make sure you get the right one but you get the idea it's cool that you have two different connections with one remote on my list of pros I've also written down that it's modular which I guess it is if you have multiple multiples if you have multiple of these receivers does that make sense if you have a lot of these receivers you can trigger a lot of cameras at the same time with one remote so it's modular that's a pro definitely boy am I rusty today I totally forgot to talk about the fact that you can also plug in the cable to trigger your camera straight into the remote so you don't have to use it as a wireless one so I guess that's another benefit and then another benefit if you do use it as a wireless one, this uh, works up to 100 meters. So if you're planning to shoot a photo of yourself from quite far away, then you know, this is pretty damn useful. It's pretty good. Now, the negatives, because this might seem like it's got it all, but in my opinion, all these things, the batteries in here, the little switch, the little this and that, and the switch there, and the port, and the, the cables, and the batteries, and the buttons, 
These are all different points of failure. With this remote, you have the remote, the cable, you plug it in, it's done. These batteries can die, these batteries can die, this thing can break, this thing can break, you can snap one of these things off, who knows? There's so many different points of failure and that's just not ideal. So yes, you get extra functionalities, but it comes at a cost and the cost is that there's more stuff that can go wrong, there are more items that you can forget. You know, these are four different things versus one unit. Yeah, you gotta weigh it up for yourself. Are you the type of person that will never forget anything? Probably not. I don't think no one's ever forgotten nothing, ever. Does that make sense? Oh my god, what's happening? I feel so unwell. Anyways, so yeah, lots of parts you can lose, lots of parts that can break. Then again, you get extra functionality. So yeah, make up your own mind. I quite like this one. Look, I'm done shooting, but I found an extra negative about the Hanel Capture Pro. There is no sliding lock mechanism like on these two, where you can hold down the button and then slide it, and it'll keep shooting. So it's the same as holding your trigger button down. You can only just click this remote. There's no actual way of clicking it and sliding it unless I haven't figured that out yet with this remote. But it's a small downside, but it is definitely a downside because when I'm shooting, for example, people or traffic or I need the camera to shoot as much as possible, it is really useful to just click it like that, let it run, destroy your shutter, and yeah, happy days. Now, number three, the most expensive one. As I mentioned, this costs about 300 bucks here in Australia, which is absolutely dumb because I've seen it on eBay for like 50 US bucks and I'm pretty sure it's the exact same thing. This is the Canon Timer Remote Controller, the TC80 N3. It has one cable that works for a 5D, 60, 70, 1D, blah, blah, blah series. So it's that pro, that connection. It just works. Let's go straight to the positives. This thing always works. I have four or five of these. I've only ever had one faulty unit and I'd say that's the outlier. It's, you know, it's Canon gear, it just works. It is weather sealed, so this is supposed to work rain and shine, just like your 1D or your 5D. It has a nice little stop thing you have to pull this to unplug it from your camera. It's not just gonna pop out because someone pulls the cable. You actually gotta pull that back and then it pops out. It's just sturdy, the buttons are nice, they always work. There's a little backlight, the little scrolly button. I'm not a huge fan of that, but it again, it's, it's nice and quick to adjust your settings. It's got a nice little flicking uh, lock mode. It's good, I like it, I'm a fan. It's straightforward. Oh, I'm gonna shoot a time lapse. You take the one remote, don't take the cable and the receiver and this remote and then one of these batteries is dead and then you know and then for some reason the third point on the pro list is it just works which yeah i, I stand by that it just works it, it it is reliable as heck i've used this on all of my professional shoots over the last god knows how many years yeah big fan despite the price here in australia then the negatives obviously number one is the price doesn't make sense it is such a you know simple to create little unit yes it is high quality but still it shouldn't be 300 australian dollars another negative is the battery it has one of those flat batteries that you put in I'm trying I'm opening the wrong side <laughs> one of those flat batteries these bad boys the cr blah 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 um they're less easy to find they're more expensive then again, once you have it, it runs forever. That's another pro I should add, actually. This, these batteries run forever. It has no off switch, which is a negative to me because it stresses me out, the fact that it's always on. It is limited to the one connection per remote because it is hardwired. So yeah, there you have it. This is the Canon TC80 N3, expensive. This is the Hanel Capture Timer Remote, medium price. And this is a cheap eBay or like Amazon, whatever it is, uh, timer remote switch. This is the RST7002. I've seen it from newer and some other brands. Make up your own mind. I might write a little blog post with some extra info if you guys would like that. Check it out. If you want to know more and if you want to be a part of giveaways and extra information and you want to be a part of the newsletter community, subscribe to my newsletter below. It is finally starting. I'm writing some stuff for it. It's gonna be fun. There is gonna be giveaways and discount codes and all that fun stuff. So check it out in the link below. Please click it, subscribe to my newsletter. I'm giving you all this stuff for free. It's just, you know, it's the least you can do. I assume you're already subscribed because that's how YouTube works. Subscribe to my newsletter now because I'm taking control back over the feed. Algorithms suck on social media. It's hard to reach who you wanna reach. It's hard to reach the people that you've built up a following from, you know, over the last decade or so because algorithms are now a thing and you push ads and stuff. The newsletter is gonna be fun, I promise, it's great. Hopefully by the next video, I am gone with this cold or this cold is gone from me. I can't really think, uh, to be honest, I gotta focus on breathing and talking. So my English, my uh, monologue on this video is just whack. 
Thank you so much for checking this video out. I appreciate you if you haven't subscribed yet. Subscribe if you have, haven't liked this video. No, only like this video if you like this video, all right? And then leave a comment and then, yeah, help me out with this channel, please. Thank you. Appreciate it. Catch you guys in the next video. By the way, I'm editing the Hawaii video in case you're wondering why this is in between New York and Hawaii. Hawaii is great. I just need more time to edit it. It's, gonna, it's a pretty big video. I shot like eight hours of footage. I want to make it as good as possible. So I've got this little thing in between. Big old ramble at the end here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. <coughs> oh my god. Poland are ruining my life. Or maybe I have a cold from all the traveling. I don't know. Not feeling great. Have felt better. <sighs> Subscribe for Hawaii. Woo!